Greetings, my friends and enemies. My name is John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. So today I'm going to show you how you can even use your mainstream calculus, which is a flawed formulation, without the use of limits. Okay. In other words, limit theory is profoundly flawed and takes a long time to learn and to master. Even your lecturers don't understand it properly. How do I know? Because I've taken courses on real analysis. So uh, learning the theory of limits was part of those courses. In fact, I took one course in real analysis. In any case, uh, the information I'm going to be revealing to you today actually comes out of a book that's never going to be published. It's a very tiny section. That book is called What You Had to Know in Mathematics, But Your Ignorant Educators Could Not Tell You. Okay, so there's a good reason that book is never going to be published. Uh, and uh, most of you know why namely that I have been libeled and called a crank and there are many websites that uh, say disparaging things about me. But those are all done because mainstream academics fear what I am doing to them. I'm exposing their ignorance, uh, revealing their arrogance, their incompetence, their stupidity, and of course their jealousy. So let me quickly show you uh, what this is all about. Now, in a previous uh, video, <clears throat> I demonstrated to you that you can use this identity, which I revealed for the first time to the world, to find the derivative, okay? And you don't need to use limits or anything like that. And I'll show you a method in this new article that I wrote of how you can actually find the derivative. And I give you both a general proof and also a simple example with numbers, as you see here, okay? So, and then I reveal something entirely new to you. Um, I show you how to establish the definite integral that you use in your mainstream calculus without any theory of limits. But now, bear in mind that because your mainstream calculus was never rigorous and never formulated correctly, there is always this extraneous term that you saw already in the previous video. So it has to be used if you want to transition from the derivative to the integral. And of course, using this method that is peculiar to your mainstream calculus is much harder because it's nowhere near as optimal and well formed as the new calculus. Okay. Uh, in other words, it uses a non parallel secant line in which old Newton and Leibniz and all the others were desperately trying to solve the tangent line problem but failed miserably. So, uh, being the first to solve the tangent line problem in human history to me is a big deal, but it seems that no one else wants to acknowledge this. And the reasons are obvious. So you can judge for yourself. In any case, um, the first stage in this process is to note that any area, even in your mainstream calculus, is in actual fact a product of two arithmetic means. You've never learned it that way. For example, you've learned about Riemann sums and the limit of Riemann sums and also about indefinite integrals. But none of that is well from knowledge. And any integral, uh, indefinite, indefinite integration excluded, is a product of two arithmetic means. So uh, also in the case of indefinite integrals, the way you find the limit is you either do it by numeric integration or you do analysis on the limit. Uh, but in any case, you don't need limit theory at all in calculus, not for differentiation or integration. So 
the the area of a rectangle is the product of two arithmetic means normally uh, the vertical line lengths have an arithmetic mean which is the vertical side of a rectangle and all the horizontal line lengths in the rectangle have an arithmetic mean which is the side that is a horizontal line in the rectangle okay so that's all that is an area and to find an irregular bounded area between a curve and the x-axis we actually need to find the arithmetic mean of all the y-ordinates of the function in the interval and then just multiply it by the interval width the interval width turns out to be the arithmetic mean of all the horizontal line lengths and of course the mean of the y-ordinates is the arithmetic mean of the vertical line lengths in the bounded region that we're trying to find so i want to show you very quickly that the most important theorem in calculus is the mean value theorem and that the fundamental theorem of calculus is derived in one step from this theorem okay and how is it derived in one step well you just multiply this theorem by h on both sides and if you do so what you end up with is the area which is this middle part right okay and now uh, in your mainstream calculus the right hand side gives the area but the right hand side is actually equal to the arithmetic mean times the interval width okay and that gives you the area as you see over here so we derive the fundamental theorem directly in one step from the mean value theorem in my opinion this the mean value theorem should have been called the fundamental theorem because all the other theorems are derived from it so you will see how to prove this as we go along in this article so again you start off with your definition that you saw earlier on uh, so on page one i showed you this uh, this definition here that you see in the first line and that's the one that you need to use okay so you need to use that on page six as follows you say okay what we need are all the y ordinates of the function f prime of x now i've chosen f prime of x uh, on purpose because i want to show you that it resolves to its antiderivative or its primitive which is f and so you start off with this and you replace uh, this whole expression by what you see on the right hand side by virtue of the fact uh, that the identity was proven to you right at the beginning and you do this for all the different f spaced uh, at equal intervals of h over n and you'll see that it doesn't matter how many of those intervals you'll have this integral is evaluated in a finite n number of steps and it doesn't matter which integer n you choose so you'll notice at the right hand side side telescopes and what you get is this red expression here and of course if you sum the left and the right you end up with what you see in front of you in the middle here where my mouse is hovering now <clears throat> we need to divide by n to get the arithmetic mean right that's the first thing we do and then we multiply by h to get the area so doing so we take this multiply divide by n to get the arithmetic mean and multiply by h to get the area and thus we end up uh, with the integral that you see down here but before we get to that we want to know what happens we know that this sum here is extraneous because the y ordinates given by the this particular ordinate of the uh, function f prime is what we want we do not want this extra difference in slope right because that's what it really is it's just the difference in slope and so the right hand sum which is this includes this uh, extraneous difference and it can be subtracted from both sides these sides here these sides here to get the fundamental theorem of calculus written like that and the left hand side here is the same as saying the integral from x to x plus h with of, of f prime of x with respect to dx in other words 
this expression here that you see is the same as the right hand side over here as this okay same as this so uh, that's the fundamental theorem and this result is finite and it'll work for any value of n greater than zero now this whole entire process is far simpler in the new calculus because parallel secant lines are used as opposed to non-parallel secant lines which were the ones that newton and leibniz used so there are no extraneous terms or expressions that lead to the behemoth or behemoth known as the theory of limits which is neither required for the derivative nor the integral so i have generously revealed this knowledge rigorous knowledge based only on sound geometry and i hope to get back at all those who have libeled me and called me a crank and to give ammunition to aspiring young students and mathematicians to fight against them and learn how to do mathematics the right way also download my free ebook which is at this particular link and uh, click on like and subscribe to my channel and tell all your friends about it and if you do decide to ask me a question please uh, restrict your questions to one because i don't have time to answer too many questions very well this is it uh, oh there's one more thing i need to say uh, this video uh, will be appearing in both my youtube section my youtube channel and also the new channel which is the bitchu channel now i am transitioning from youtube to the new channel so make sure you subscribe to my new channel i'll put all the new details in the, the details section and note that i will soon stop uploading videos to youtube because i don't consider it to be reliable and i don't like the fact that they can remove my videos if they believe the content is inappropriate very well then um, this is a new calculus channel my name is john gabriel till next time goodbye